It's a conundrum. Mm. All right, let's talk about Raw. So first off, as I noted in the opening segment, uh, they did a Raw show last night. It was the the follow-up show to Hell in a Cell, and they have already announced four matches for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which is like four weeks away. We've already got four matches announced for the show. For those of you that follow WWE, on, on Friday going into SmackDown, Friday night, like three days ago, we only had four matches for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view that was coming up two days later. So they're way ahead of the game right here. We have got Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair in a rematch. Which, by the way, if you watched Money in the Bank, they they had a long match, and then the finish was Rhea rips the the top off the table. That part hits Charlotte Flair, and it's a DQ. Okay, so obviously when you hear a DQ, you think, oh well, they're gonna they're gonna set up a, a match for this title right here, a rematch, and they'll have something playing off the finish. Maybe it'll be Rhea versus Charlotte, where the title can change hands via DQ, or Rhea versus Charlotte, no DQ. Instead, they announce it's Rhea versus Charlotte, no stipulation for the title. Because why not make it difficult? Bobby Lashley will be facing Kofi Kingston for the championship. We have got Oscar versus Naomi versus Alexa versus Nikki versus four others in a women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And we have Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, and then the winner of AJ, Randy, and Drew McIntyre next week, and four others in a men's Money in the Bank ladder match, which to me sounds like an idea to uh, get the Money in the Bank briefcase on Drew McIntyre. Although, to their credit, they did state that if Drew McIntyre wins the Money in the Bank briefcase, he still may not cash in if Lashley is the champion because of the stipulation that they did at the uh, at the Hell in a Cell match. So that's the lineup for Money in the Bank. Uh, I guess before Raw, Mike, any, any uh, thoughts on that lineup thus far? Four matches for a pay-per-view a month away. It's impressive uh, for them to to have that many things kind of laid out. But, you know, when it comes to Money in the Bank or Hell in a Cell or any of those sorts of things, you could see changes the night of. So we'll have to see what happens. And you're right. You know, it does feel like Drew McIntyre is going to get a pass to possibly get another title shot down the line. Obviously, it won't be Bobby Lashley, but... Because SmackDown still needs to take place and we still need to see the the men's match and the women's match filled up with people from SmackDown, I'm still not going to fall over shocked if Jimmy or Jey Uso or both of them are in that match and they decide to take that tact with Money in the Bank and possibly align somebody with Roman, Jimmy Uso would be a great person that provides him a threat and provides him a part of his storyline moving forward, having that near him. So there's a lot of different ways they could go with this. I don't know how creative they're going to be. Obviously, they want the match to be creative because in it so far, Ricochet and John Morrison, two people that you know are are, are very, at least odds are, are very low <laughs> that they're going to take this thing home. But you know they will make the match far more spectacular with what they can do in there. So at least they're trying that way, and they didn't go with a pat hand and just load it up with stars as well, too. You actually saw Ricochet get a victory. You saw John Morrison get a victory, even though they may have been wacky, and even though it's only to get into this match, it was nice seeing some different faces win. So we got a question here from somebody wondering if there are going to be two men's Money in the Bank ladder matches. I actually don't know, but if I look at the lineup that we've got thus far, I mean, we've got, well, we've got four women that were announced on Raw and four open spaces. We got three men, but we also have a last chance match for the fourth spot and four open spots. So my my presumption would be that we're going to have four people from Raw, four people from SmackDown, and it'll be just one ladder match for all of the men, one ladder match for all of the women. And depending on what the rules are this year, whoever wins can cash in. I don't even know what the rules are going to be this year. But like somebody said, could Drew win and then cash in on Roman Reigns? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are this sure. year. I don't know if you have to cash in on your own brand this year. Sometimes sometimes rules are you're, you have to cash in on your own brand, and sometimes rules are you can cash in on any brand. So it's whatever they want to do. Who cares? Let them cash in on NXT. The only rule should be Otis and Miz can't be anywhere near this thing. What I, what I thought was actually a good idea that we came up with on Observer Radio last night 
is you have a dual story here. You have Drew McIntyre winning the Money in the Bank briefcase, and the rules would have to be that he can only cash in on Raw, okay? Then Lashley is the champion, but the story is that Drew cannot cash in if Lashley is the champion. So then the storyline is Drew needs to hope that somebody beats Lashley within one year because if nobody does, his one year expires and he can never cash in. That's a storyline for you. That's something new. Yeah. There's a problem with that. Then you actually have to go a year without them screwing around with that briefcase and being able to sit there calmly and actually have a storyline go through. I think what's more likely in that scenario if Drew were to win this thing is that somebody defeats Bobby Lashley down the line, which opens the door for him around the time of the Royal Rumble to get to WrestleMania. Now, if that's the case, the name that is out there to beat Bobby Lashley, because you would need somebody otherworldly, would be Brock Lesnar. And do you want to do Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre again at WrestleMania, but this time have it in front of fans? I mean, that's a possibility. You could do something like that if you wanted to, and that way Drew doesn't have to wait a year to cash it in, and he can cash it in on his brand. But I think it defeats the purpose and i think it takes some of the drama out of it even though if people see somebody win and they expect it to for them to face somebody it takes some of the drama out of it if you have to defend against your same brand all right we got to head to break back in a moment observer live i have listened to this noise like 300 times in a row dying laughing and i may go do that after the show is over because this noise that seth rollins played sounded exactly like the mummy's voice that they recreated on National Geographic. Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. It allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> what? It allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I can do it one more time. <laughs> It allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> the top comment on YouTube, I love when she says, ah! <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.